The Book of Genesis Part 84 The Book of Genesis Part 84 James Gunn Frequently one is asked how a believer may ascertain the guidance of the Lord in the movements of life. The reply generally involves for salient points, the Word of God, the Lord would not have us do anything contrary to His revealed will, the Spirit of God, Acts 16 verses 6-7, circumstances, Acts 16 verses 8-9, and the peace of Christ as an umpire in the heart, Colossians 3 verse 16. The Circumstance It appears that at this point in Jacob's life God directed his affairs through circumstances. God had predicted in his promise to Abraham that his descendants would be strangers in a foreign land, Genesis 15 verse 13. We know in looking backward over history that Egypt was meant, but it is doubtful if Jacob understood the prediction in that way. In fact, from the history of his predecessors, Jacob might well have avoided going down into Egypt. His grandfather Abraham had done so, and certainly found troubles multiplied as a result. It was in Egypt that Abraham obtained Hagar. Isaac, Jacob's father, had been warned of God against going down into Egypt for help, Genesis 26 verses 1-3. to The Lord who knows the end of a thing from the beginning allowed the circumstances which resulted in the moving into Egypt of the entire family of Jacob. While the circumstance was unusual that began the chain of events which culminated in the arrival in Egypt of Jacob's family, there was also something very ordinary about it, famine and food, need and a source of supply. There is no doubt about the Lord's ability to employ the commonplace and make it extraordinary to accomplish his own purposes. It would seem proper to assume that Jacob had no thought of changing his place of residence, nevertheless, when the way was opened and God's word of assurance given, Genesis 46 verses 1 to 5, without further hesitation he yielded to the divine intention. The Action even in old age, Jacob was alert and resourceful. There was nothing indolent about him. Why do you look one upon another, he asked his sons. To sit around and do nothing to alleviate their predicament was much against his nature. Jacob had received news that there was corn in Egypt, and no longer being able to travel himself, he dispatched his sons, all of them with the exception of Benjamin. How little did the ten brothers know of all that lay before them? What they had sown, they now were going to reap. Being foreigners, it apparently was necessary that they make direct appeal to Egypt's food administrator. The Jewish Talmud says that everyone entering that land had to register by signature, and implies that Joseph there recognized his brothers by name. This seems very improbable and does not agree with the inspired record in the book of Genesis. Twenty years at least had passed since Joseph had seen his brothers, Genesis 37 verse 2, 41 verse 46, 41 colon 54. Memory not only brought back their features but his early dreams. 